kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Oh my God, that is complicated. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Woo! Kumusta kayo? Mabuhay! Welcome back to MGN Diego. Ako po si Ovila and for today, honestly, I am very excited about this video because it's YouTube. YouTube actually suggested this video to me and I was like, it would be interesting to do this on the channel. And the video is called basically, learn Filipino in 30 minutes. All the basics you need. So this is probably going to be a long video, I mean 30 minute video, so if you have time, you're welcome to watch, otherwise, maybe another time. But, uh, also because I will probably be pausing quite a few times so that I can understand and pronounce, you know, the words and sentences. So, let's get to it! See, I'm even taking the keyboard so that I can pause every time I need to. Want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. Welcome to FilipinoPod101.com's Filipino sa tatlong minuto. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Filipino. Kamusta? Ako si Erika. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Hi, I'm Erica. Nice to meet you. In this series, Kamusta? we're going to learn basic Filipino expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. Tuh. It's in not this super lesson, easy. You're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Filipino. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Here we go. Kamusta? Ako si Erica. Kamusta? Ako si Ovela. Kamusta? Ako si Ovela. Yeah, you don't say K, you say Ka. Just like in Arabic, ka. Kamusta? Ako si Ovela. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Oh my God, that is complicated. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Woo! Hi, I'm Erica. Nice it's nice to meet you. My God, it's nice to meet you is kinagagalak kong makilala ka. That is so long. Kamusta ako si Erika? Si? It's kamusta ako si Ovela. Kamusta ako si Ovela. Kinagagalak ko. Kinagagalak kong. Makilala ka. Makilala ka. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Ooh, that's sounding like something right now. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Did you get it? Let's take it step by step. Start by saying, Kamusta? Why do you say kamust, kamusta and not kumusta? I mean, it's a U, it's not an A. This means, how are you? What's but up? it's commonly used to say, hi, in Filipino. Kamusta? Next, say, ako si, ako si, I am, and then your name. My name is Erica. Ako so I'll say, ako si Erica. Finally, say, kinagagalak kong makilala ka. This means, it's nice to meet you. Kinanak na, kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Makilala ka. Kamusta? Ako si Erika. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. Next, we're going to learn how to introduce ourselves in formal Filipino. With the but pose. First, I'll teach you two words that turns any Filipino sentence formal. They are po and opo. Opo. Okay, po. I didn't know that. Opo. All right. All Filipinos learn these two words when they are young because they are a must when speaking politely to those who are older. Mm-hmm. Now here's how to introduce your respect your elders yourself in formal Filipino. Kamusta po? Ako si Erika Reyes. Kamusta po? Kamusta po? Ako si Ovela. Kinagagalak ko po kayong makilala. Oh! oh my god, they added the po in there. Kinagagalak ko po kayong makilala. 
How are you? I'm Erika Reyes. It's nice to meet you. Kamusta po? Ako si Erika Reyes. Kinagagalak ko po kayong makilala. Kinagagalak ko po yung ano. Uh, Kinagagalak ko po kayong makilala. Did you notice the word po in this introduction? Let's compare it with the informal introduction we learned earlier. First, we have kamusta po mm -hmm. instead of just kamusta. As we've said before, kamusta means how are you. So why did they remove the ng and added the po? Why did they remove the ng? Is it like something just to um, basically attach two words or something, the ng? And has essentially the same use as hi in English. It comes from the Spanish phrase, como esta. Como esta, we señora. Po to this to make it polite. For the next sentence, there is no need to change a cosi or I am. However, saying your full name is considered more formal. Hey, well, then why do I say every time a coposi? You know? You can add the po between a co and si, in my opinion, right? Or in your opinion. In the Philippines, we say our first names first and last names last. Oh, yeah. Finally, pay attention to the ending. We went from kinagagalak kong makilala ka to kinagagalak ko po kayong makilala. Ka or you is changed to the plural pronoun kayo to make the sentence more formal. Huh. The pronoun is moved to the front of the verb. And ng is added to connect the words. Oh, so that's what happened. So they took the k, k, e, ka, ka, and they put it before makilalala, makilalala, makilala. <laughs> and then they took the ng from kong, and they put it uh, in front of ka. But they added also, wait, you know, wow, this is confusing. Finally, we also add po to the sentence to show respect. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in Filipino is, Kamusta? Ako si Erika. Kinagagalak kong makilala ka. The formal way to introduce yourself is, Kamusta, Kamusta po? po? Ako si Erika Reyes. Kinagagalak ko po kayong makilala. Now it's time for Erika's tips. Have you gotten hold of saying, Kinagagalak kong makilala ka? Well, you might be surprised, but Filipinos say, Nice to meet you, more often than its Filipino counterpart. This is because many English words and phrases are used in daily conversation since English is the second official language of the Philippines. Filipinos also shake hands during first meetings, just like in many Western cultures. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you use the proper Filipino introduction, your new Filipino friends will definitely be impressed. Yeah! In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Filipino. Okay. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people. Handa na ba kayo? Are you ready? Then let's go. Here's how we say thank you in Filipino. It's very Salamat. easy. Salamat. 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 Salamat means thank you. Mm -hmm. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add marami. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat. Yes. Marami means a lot, and the ng is a connector added to marami to connect marami and salamat. So it is a connector, the ng ng. Maraming salamat. Okay. Maraming salamat literally means many thanks and is equivalent to thank you very much. During the last lesson, we mentioned the informal and formal way of speaking Filipino. Salamat is the informal way to thank someone. When thanking someone older than you... I can tell that she's reading what she is uh, actually saying right now because her eyes are shifting to, the, to her right. You need to use the polite formal form. Just add the po Do you remember what we need in order to do that? Mm-hmm. That's right. We just need to add the word po. Po. Or opo. Salamat po. Salamat po. If you really want to thank someone in a formal setting, you can add maraming 
which means a lot, as we have just learned. Mm -hmm. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po. Maraming Now, how do you answer? Po. It's easy. Just say, walang anuman. Ooh. Walang anuman. Walang anuman. Walang anuman. Walang anuman literally means it's nothing. Oh. But it is the equivalent of you are welcome. Oh, okay. That's good to know. When I go to the Philippines, I'm going to be using walang anuman. Walang anuman. Wala means nothing, while anuman stands for whatsoever. Hmm. It is a very common phrase to say when replying to a friend or a stranger who is thanking you. To make it formal and more polite, just add po. po. Walang anuman Walang po. Anuman po. Okay. Walang anuman po. So basically, you just have to add po everywhere if you want to be formal. <laughs> so when someone says salamat or maraming salamat po to you, you can simply reply with walang anuman or walang anuman po. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's that easy. <laughs> now it's time for Erica's tips. The word salamat is said to have been of Semitic origin. It sounds similar to the Arabic salam mm -hmm. and the Hebrew shalom, meaning mm -hmm. peace. Indeed. Filipino has been influenced by many languages throughout history, so don't be surprised if you find similar sounding words from other languages, most especially Spanish words. Yep. Even your names have a, a resemble Spanish names. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying salama. In this lesson, We'll learn some of the most common greetings used in the Philippines. Handa na ba kayo? Are you ready? Then let's start. So let me remember, walang, walang anuman, right? To say, uh, it's nothing. First, we'll learn the greetings we use when meeting people. Kamusta? Kamusta? Kamusta kayo? Do you remember this from the first lesson? Kamusta literally means, how are you? But it is used as hi or hello. Musta is a shortened version of kamusta. Really? Which you can use when greeting friends. Musta. Musta. For formal situations, we use kamusta po. Kamusta po. Kamusta po. Now, here are sometimes specific greetings used when meeting people. Magandang araw. Magandang araw. Magandang araw. Literally, magandang araw means good day. Hmm. To be more specific magandang about araw. which time in the day we greet someone, we use magandang umaga, magandang tanghali, hmm. and magandang hapon. Good afternoon. Meaning, good morning. Morning. Good noon and good afternoon, respectively. Magandang umaga, magandang tang tanghali, magandang hapon. Magandang umaga. Magandang tanghali. Tanghali. Oh, so you actually pronounce the H. Tanghali. Okay. Magandang umaga. Magandang tanghali. Magandang hapon. hapon. Yep. They pronounce the they pronounce the H. Magandang hapon. Magandang tanghali. Magandang umaga. Magandang araw. During the evening, there is only one greeting, and that is. Magandang gabi. Gabi. <laughs> Magandang gabi. gabi. It's easy for me to remember gabi because it's the name of my uh, brother's friend. Gabi. Magandang gabi. Magandang umaga. Magandang tanghali. Magandang hapon. Magandang araw. Maganda means beautiful or good. Ooh. The connector NG is added to connect maganda. So... Nadine Lustre is magandang. <laughs> and gabi. In formal situations, you just need to add po to the Filipino greetings. Magandang umaga po. Magandang araw po. Magandang umaga po. Magandang tanghali magandang po. Magandang tanghali po. Magandang hapon po. Magandang gabi po. Are you ready for more? Next are some greetings we use when leaving. To say goodbye in Filipino, we say paalam. Paalam. Paalam? We also have sige mauna na ako. Huh? That's one, that one is way too complicated. 
Sige, mauna na ako. Ah, it's easier to say paalam. Paalam. Literally. All right, I'll go ahead. Oh. It's a more casual way of saying goodbye. What? How is that more casual if it's longer? <laughs> Sige, mauna na ako. Interesting. Interesting. You see, you don't read it mona. It's mauna. So the you, you have like to emphasize on the you. Sige mauna na, na ako. See, that's so hard because it ends with an A and then it starts again with an A. God. Sige mauna na ako. Sige mauna na ako. Paalam. Wow. Finally, we have hanggang sa muli. Meaning, hanggang sa muli. See you again. Hang I've seen this word before. Hanggang sa muli. Hanggang sa muli. Again, to make this formal, we just need to add po. Of course. Paalam po. Uh -huh. Sige, mauna na po ako. See, in long phrases, sentences, why don't we add the po at the end? It's like you have to put it before the ako. Hmm. Sige, mauna na po ako. Sige, mauna na po ako. Sige, mauna na ako. Sige, mauna na po ako. I'm guessing you're gonna put the po before the muli? Hanggang sa po muli? Hmm, I don't know. That sounds weird. Hanggang sa muli po. Ah, see, at the end this time. Hmm, hanggang sa muli po. Yeah, see, it sounds better to the ear that way. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Filipino. Let's review them all again. Here are the greetings we use when meeting people. Kamusta? Kamusta? Kamusta po? Magandang araw. Magandang araw. Magandang umaga. Magandang tanghali. Magandang hapon. Magandang gabi. Alright. Kamusta? Magandang araw. Magandang umaga. Magandang tanghali. Magandang hapon. Magandang gabi. And then, you know, if I want to be formal, I'll just add po at the end of all of these. But the important one to remember, I think, is magandang. When leaving, we have paalam. Paalam. Sige, mauna na ako. Hanggang sa muli. Damn. Paalam. Sige, mauna na ako. Hanggang sa muli. For greeting people who are older than you, just add po. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for So Eric cheesy! It is easy, isn't it? <laughs> Another famous greeting you might hear in the Philippines is Mabuhay! Mabuhay! Yes, that's true. This literally means live, but it's used oh. to mean welcome. Okay. It is used in formal situations like when welcoming an audience during events or when welcoming people into the country but not necessarily when welcoming guests to your home. Mm. In the last lesson, we learned the most common greetings in Filipino. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? This phrase can be a lifesaver. True. The majority of Filip... I will need this in the Philippines. <laughs> Filipino people understand English. But if you ask in Filipino, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the informal way to ask it. Nagsasalita ka ba ng Ingles? Eh, 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 eh. Nagsasalita ka ba ng Ingles? So, it's N-G. Why do you pronounce it nang? Nang. There is no A in between N and G. So weird. Nagsasalita ka ba ng Ingles? So I have to remember this phrase, man. Nang sasalita ka ba ng Ingles? Let's break down the sentence. In Filipino, the verb can come before the subject. Nagsasalita means speaking, followed by ka, which means you. Do you? Next, there is ba, which is the question marking particle. Oh. After it comes nang, which acts as an object marking particle. Marking English, which, as you might have English. guessed, is English. Okay. Nang sasalita ka ba ng English? Ka ba ng English? Nang sasalita ka ba ng English? Another common way to ask if someone can speak English Something is... Something easier, maybe. 
Marunong ka bang mag-ingles? Oh my God! This one is even more complex! What the hell? <laughs> marunong ka bang... Uh, marunong ka bang mag-ingles? Actually, no. It might sound easier. Marunong ka bang mag-ingles? Yeah, it sounds easier. Yeah. Nang sasalita ka bang ng ingles? Yeah. The second one sounds... It's easier to pronounce. Marunong kang... Marunong ka bang mang ingles Literally, this means, can you do English? Can you do English? Marunong ka bang mag-ingles? Marunong ka bang mang ingles? Now we're going to make these sentences formal. Filipinos follow the Spanish custom of changing a singular pro- Hmm, are we gonna add the po before the ka? Pronoun to Let's plural. See. In order to show respect in formal situations, so we change ka to kayo and then move it after ba. We also need to add po as a sign of respect. Yes! I've noticed that the po always comes before the word that starts with ka. I don't know why. It's something that I've noticed. Yo! You have to... Well, yo. Yeah. <laughs> you have to add the yo to ka. And move ba before the ka yo. And then add po. Damn! So, let me try to read this, man. Nang sasalita po ba kayo ng ingles? And marunong po ba kayong mang ingles? Not bad, right? Everything else stays the same. Nagsasalita po ba kayo ng ingles? Marunong po ba kayong mag ingles? Nagsasalita po ba kayo ng ingles? Marunong po ba kayong mag ingles? If you want to be even more formal, you can add mawalang galang lang po before the sentence. It means, excuse me. Get out of here! <laughs> what? Yo, I mean, I'm, I'm able to pronounce these sentences right now, but as soon as I'm gonna stop this, I'm gonna forget. Like, I'm gonna have to watch this video, like, easy 10 times before I go to the Philippines just to remember a few words. Mawalang galang lang po, mawalang galang lang po, nang sasalita po ba kayo ng ingles? Mawalang galang lang po, marunong po ba kayong mang ingles? Mawalang galang lang po, nagsasalita po ba kayo ng ingles? Excuse me, do you speak English? Mawalang galang lang po, marunong po ba kayong mag ingles? Mawalang galang lang po. Marunong po ba kayong mang ingles? Here are some common responses you might hear. Oh, oh, oh. Oo. Oh, oh. Konti. Yes. Oo, oh, oh. Oo. Oh, oh. Konti. A little. <laughs> okay. Konti. Hindi. No. Hindi? Hindi means no in, uh, in Tagalog? Yo. Okay, well, that one is easy to remember. Do you speak Hindi? <laughs> you're, you're basically saying, do you speak no? Okay. So I'm just gonna say no. If you ask me if I speak Tagalog, I'm gonna say Hindi. Hmm. Conti. A little. Conti. Hmm. In Spanish, I think it means with you? No? Conti? Oh, 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 oh. Hindi. But you pronounce it now Hindi. Now it's time for Erica's tip. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can use this question with any language you need. Just substitute Inglés with Español for mm -hmm. Spanish, Japón for Japanese, Japón. Italiano for Italian, Alemán for German. What? Did you say Alemán from uh, French? Because in French, German is uh, Allemagne, you know? Oh, Allemand, Allemand actually, Allemand. Okay, interesting. Japón. Japan. Japón. <laughs> Italiano, sí, señora. No, that's Spanish. Uh, Español. Yeah, just... Uh... Actually, yeah, why do you pronounce the name of the um, languages in French? It's weird because in French you say Español, not Spanish. And uh, Allemand, Allemand. Yeah. And so on. So I would say... Nang sasalita ka ba ng Espanyol? Nang sasalita ka bang ng Hapon? 
Nang sasalita ka bang Italiano? Nang sasalita ka bang ang Alamang? Now you know how to ask if people speak English or even your native language. Mm -hmm. But no one speaks my native language language in the Philippines because it's not just Arabic, it's Algerian Arabic. It's pretty different. I hope this doesn't stop you from learning Filipino. Nah. We'll be learning more ways to say excuse me and I'm sorry in our next Filipino sa tatlong minuto lesson. Hanggang sa muli! Want to get cheat sheets, samuli. audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. Kamusta kayo? Ako si Erika. Hi everybody, I'm Erika. Welcome to FilipinoPod101.com's Filipino sa tatlong minuto. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Filipino. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase, Mawalang galang lang po. Nagsasalita po ba kayo ng Ingles? Excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the phrase, Mawalang galang lang po, which means, Magalang Excuse me, in formal Filipino. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use this and other words when apologizing in Filipino. We can use, Mawalang galang lang po, when we need to stop someone to ask a question. It literally means just to be rude, but it's used to mean excuse me. For example, Mawalang galang lang po, nasaan po ang palengke? Excuse me, where is the market? Nasaan po ang palengke? Mawalang galang lang po, nasaan po ang palengke? There is another phrase we use to mean excuse me, and that is paumanhin po. Okay. Pauma, pauman, paumanhin po. Paumanhin po. However, paumanhin po is used when you have bothered someone and could also mean I'm sorry. Huh. Paumanhin po. Paumanhin po. We use mawalang galang lang po and paumanhin po exclusively for formal situations. For informal situations, Filipinos usually just say, excuse me. But if there is something you really want to apologize for, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is, patawarin mo ako. It means, please forgive me. Patawarin mo ako. And is used in informal situations. Patawarin mo ako. Patawarin mo ako. Ako. It's weird. It's not even a ka. It's like a mix between ka and ka. Patawarin mo ako, ako, ako. In formal situations, we say, Patawarin niyo po ako. Patawarin niyo po ako. Patawarin niyo po ako. What? You say niyo? Niyo po ako. Patawarin niyo po ako. Here we added po and turned the second person pronoun into plural. Another common phrase Filipinos use for apologizing is, Pasensya na po kayo. Yeah. Pasensya na po kayo. Pasensya na po kayo. Pasensya. This phrase is usually heard from shopkeepers when apologizing to customers. It can be translated as, Please be patient with us. Now it's time for Erica's tips. In the Philippines, it is normal to simply say, excuse me, or I'm sorry, since English is commonly used in conversation. You could also add Thank po God. to these phrases to make them sound a bit more formal and sincere. Excuse me po. Excuse me po. I'm or sorry po. Excuse po. I'm sorry po. Nice. Or sorry po. Okay. In the last lesson, we learned quite a few phrases used when apologizing in Filipino. In this lesson, we are going to learn numbers in Filipino. Woo, fun! That's right, numbers. Yeah. Mga numero. And you are going to learn them in only three minutes. Tatlong minuto. What? <laughs> are you ready? Let's start. Let's, let's try. Isa. 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 Dalawa. 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 Isa. Dalawa. Tatlo. 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 Isa, dalawa, tatlo. Apat. Apat. 
Apat. Lima. 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 Anim. 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 Like anime. Anim. Pito. Pito. Walo. Walo. Ah, Wal this one I can remember because in Arabic, walu means nothing. So, walu. Walo. Sham. How do you pronounce sham. that sham? That's siam. <laughs> sham. 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 Sampu. 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 Okay. Isha. Dalawa. Tatlo. Apat. Lima. Anim. Pito. Walo. Sham. Sampu. Now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Isa. Isa. Dalawa. Dalawa. Tatlo. Tatlo. Apat. Apat. Lima. Lima. Anim. Anim. I've noticed there is an emphasis on the A's. Isa. Dalawa. Uh, apat. Lima. Anim. Walo, probably. Siam. Sampu. <laughs> Pito. Pito. Walo. No, the emphasis is at the end. Sham. Sham. Sampu. Sampu. Man, this language is pretty Great hard. Job. Try to remember these numbers by heart because you'll see them again in bigger numbers. No. Nope. Do you mm -mm. know what is before isa? Here's a clue. It's almost the same as in English. It's zero. 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 Now let's continue from 11. Labing isa. Labing isa. Labing isa. Labing dalawa. Labing dalawa. Labing dalawa. <laughs> Labing tatlo. Labing tatlo. Labing tatlo. They sound cool. Labing apat. Labing apat. Labing apat. Labing lima. Labing lima. Labing lima. It's like a, the name of a song, man. Labing lima. Labing lima. Labing lima. Labing anim. Labing anim. Labing anim. Labing pito. Labing pito. Labing pito. pito. Labing walo. Labing walo. Labing <laughs> walo. Labing sham. Labing sham. Labing sham. These numbers may seem longer and harder to remember. Yeah, you just add labing, so it's fine. But they basically follow a simple rule, which is labi plus connector plus the numbers 1 to 9. Exactly. In Filipino, the connector is usually N-A. If and even if it's an I-N or I... Um, yeah, if it's what? Is it an N-A, N-G, or M? They all sound the same in the end. Labing, labim, you know, so it's fine. The letter before it is a consonant. And N-G if the letter before it is a vowel. In this case, since labi ends with I, then we'll be using the N-G connector. However, N-G sometimes changes its form depending on the letter that follows it. For the letters D, L, R, S, and T, the G from NG is dropped to make it easier to pronounce. Oh my God. Labin dalawa, labin tatlo, labin lima, and labin sham. My brain is about to explode. <laughs> if a P follows the NG connector, the NG becomes an M, just like in labin pito. Now it's time for Erica's tips. Filipinos don't exclusively use the Filipino way of counting. As I've said before, English is commonly used in the Philippines, so it is very common for us to count in English as well. But that's not all. Sometimes, we even use the Spanish way of counting, especially when telling the time. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers from Isa to Labinsham. Do you remember them? Well, let's not stop there. Now I'll give you the tense. Dalawampu. 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 Tatlumpu. 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 It's P U and P O. She's pronouncing it exactly the same. Po po. It's tatlumpu. Tatlumpu. Apat na po. Apat na po. Apat na po. Limampu. 
Limampu. Limampu. Anim na po. Anim na po. Anim na po. Pitumpo. Pitumpo. So you just have Pitumpo. to add the po. Walumpo. 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 Sham na po. Sham, Sham na, na po. po. Just like 11 to 19 from the last lesson, the tense also has a common formula. It is the numbers 1 to 9 yeah. plus connector plus pu. As I mentioned, the connector is usually na if the letter before or it NG. is a consonant and nj if the letter before it is or a vowel. Just N. I also mentioned that if a p follows the ng connector, then it becomes an m. M? Oh, Now damn. here's one more thing. If the vowel before m is an o, then that also changes and becomes a u. Just like in tatlumpu, pitumpu, and oh, so on. Oh, goodness gracious. Finally, one last thing to note is that for the number 10, we say sampu and not isampu. Are you ready to try making compound numbers out of the numbers we've learned? Hell no! I promise it's easier. Nah. How would you say 56 in Filipino? Let's take it step by step. 50 is limampu. Limampu. Just add end, at, in its contracted form, and then six, anim. So it will be limamput anim. Oh my God. Done. Isn't that easy? Limamput anim. Let's try another number. For instance, 98. Take 90, shamnapu, and add at in its contracted form, then eight, walo. Walo. Shamnaput walo. Shamnaput walo. Ready for more challenge? How do we say 100 in Filipino? It is isang daan. That is isa, which is one, yeah. followed by the connector ng, uh -huh. then daan, which is hundred. Now let's try. Why not isa zero zero? <laughs> Counting up to nine hundred ninety-nine. For compound numbers in the hundreds, the formula is numbers one to nine plus connector plus daan plus numbers 20 to 99. For example, 169 is isang daan anim na putsyam. Oh my God, forget it. Forget it, I can't. I'm gonna finish this video because, you know, I'm almost at the end, but yo, this is too hard. Isa nang dang anim na putsyam. One thing to note is that daan becomes raan when the NA connector is used. For example, 492. So complicated. Why is it so long? For compound numbers with 1 to 19, you have to add an at after saying the 100. For example, 401 is apat naraan at isa. And now it's time for Erica's tips. I mean, language, um, numbers are complicated in all languages. Conjugation may be the trickiest part in learning Filipino, but it is done mostly to make sentences sound more natural and easier to pronounce. So don't worry if you can't nail it down yet. People will still understand you. Just keep practicing and you'll get the hang of it. Can you believe it? After only two lessons, you can now count up to 999 in Filipino. In the next lesson, we are going to put your number knowledge to use. Do you have all the skills you need to go shopping in the Philippines? Nope. Let's learn it together in the next Filipino sa tatlong minuto lesson. Sa in the tatlong. previous lessons, we learned how to count in Filipino. I hope you spend some time practicing the numbers because they will come in handy today. We're going to learn how to go shopping in the Philippines. Shopping! Before we go, <laughs> you need to know how to say, How much is this? Magano ito? Huh? Magano ito? Magano ito? Are you ready to go shopping in the Philippines? Let's go! You see something you like and Magano want to ask ito. the shop clerk how much it costs. First, you might want to say either Ate, older sister, or Kuya, older brother. Ah, <clears throat> I see kuya a lot in the comment section. 
So it does mean brother. It's like uh, in Arabic, khuya. Khuya is brother. Kuya, but you guys don't have the H, I guess. So it's just kuya. Ate is older sister. Okay. Common in the Philippines to call a sales clerk ate or kuya to show respect to them. Ate, magkano ito? Kuya, magkano ito? Kuya, magkano, magkano means magkano how much? Ito. And ito means this. To be more polite, you just add po to the phrase. Ate, magkano po ito? Kuya, magkano po ito? Kuya, magkano po ito? If you ito? want to be more specific when asking, how much is this? and refer to a certain type of object, we need to add the connector NG to ito and then the object that oh you want God. to buy. For example, a hat is sombrero. Sombrero? That's like, just like in Spanish, sombrero. But in Spanish, you don't write with a U, you write with an O, right? Sombrero. Ano po itong sombrero? Or, kuya, magkano po itong sombrero? Sombrero. How much is this hat? Ate, magkano po itong sombrero? Ate, magkano po itong sombrero? Kuya, magkano po itong sombrero? Kuya, magkano like, yo, po bruh. itong sombrero? How much is this hat? The shopkeeper will usually answer by simply saying the price. Isang daang piso po. Mm. Or even the price without the peso. Isang daan po. Isang daan po. You might po. also hear them use the word lang, meaning only. So how much is isang daan again? Is it like uh, 100, right? I think. I'm not sure. Or just. To imply that the price is cheap. For example, isang daang piso lang po. Isang daan lang po. What is isang daan? I'm not telling you. Okay, okay, it's 100. Yeah! The hat costs 100 pesos. I was right! Now it's time for Erica's tips. It is common to haggle in Philippine bargain markets, so when buying, don't forget to say, May bawas pa po? Meaning, is there a discount? May Just bawas remember, pa po? It's easier to get discounts if you're polite, so don't forget those posts. Happy shopping! At this point, can you count pesos in Filipino? We are going to learn. That's gonna come in handy for sure. My bawas papo. Learn how to do this and much more in the next lesson. I'll see you in the next Filipino sa tatlong minuto lesson. Hanggang sa muli. Peace. Salamat. Po. <laughs> wow, that was a very long video, but I've learned a lot, and I'm gonna keep it. you know, in my uh, video bank so that I can uh, watch it again before I go to the Philippines. Because, my God, I have a lot to learn just to, you know, get the basics, basically, and be able to uh, uh, interact with the Filipinos that don't actually speak uh, English. But I'm pretty sure that most of you at least understand it. So I think we'll be fine. All right. I hope you guys had fun. I had tons of fun. Fun. Oh my god, let me know in the comment section below if I did okay, if I wasn't butchering your language, and if I did, I'm really sorry about that. This is my first time really trying to pronounce all those complex and long sentences in numbers. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. I did my best. <laughs> so uh, again, uh, maraming salamat po. Love you guys, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Peace out. Thanks for watching. Remember to like the video, subscribe here and wonderful things will happen and turn on your notification bell to be poked for future content. Yayayum. Yeah, yeah.